Malibu, land of the rich, of the famous, and the beautiful. But something new is on the horizon. So what on earth is this? It's a flight board. It's a totally new way to ride the water. It's a fully electric hydrofoil. You can ride up above the water and just fly along. It's You fly. Oh, that sounds a little bit back to the future, the hoverboard thing. It is the future. You want to give it a try? Oh, no, 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 not me. Are you sure? It's super easy. Anyone can ride it. Have you ever ridden a stand-up paddleboard? No, never. Sir? Nope. Skiing? Nope. Have you ever ridden anything that moves? A London bus. We can work with that. Cody, Zach. Now, you are the designers behind this particular innovation. We are. We're actually naval architects, and we were tasked with designing all of the underwater hydrodynamic surfaces. We actually designed the planes with the same software used to design airplanes, and the shape comes about as effectively optimized for the physics of the water. So you've designed this so anybody can use it? Well, if we've done our job right, we've designed it so that your brain is smart enough to control it just after a couple minutes of practice. It's almost as if I become part of the mechanics of the device. Absolutely. You're effectively flying, and your weight is controlling every movement of the board. So, David, you've got me in a wetsuit. Look, Paul, we've designed this so that anybody can use it. You just need a little bit of courage and I'm very confident I'll get you up and flying. Okay, now we've got a very big battery in here that can power you for up to an hour and a half for about 18 miles wow. of continuous flying. Wow. Yeah. And of course, we've got a hand controller that allows you to control the speed of the board. I see. So, stop and go? Stop and go, cruise control like a car with these buttons. So who's buying these? Look, Paul, we've sold 100 of these boards online uh, to people in 30 countries all over the world. They're getting out on the water, they're getting out and finding some freedom, learning how to fly, and they're absolutely loving it. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna get in the water, pull this trigger, jump to our knees, front foot forward, stand up, and then, Paul, you're gonna be flying. Ideas can inspire adventure. Design can introduce new experiences. And you know what? Innovation can teach an old dog new tricks. Can you edit this so I look like James Bond? If a tree falls in a forest and nobody's here to hear it, did it make a sound? I think the bigger question is, did it fall on a power line? Because back in 2003, that's exactly what happened in a forest just like this, knocking out power to a huge chunk of the East Coast. Sam, what's the scale of the problem that we're dealing with here? So the estimates are that there are over 250 million trees in Northern California alone that could fall into a power line. Wow. And how do the authorities tackle this problem? So there's two ways. One is uh, a method that I think a lot of us in California are familiar with, but it's these public safety power shutoffs. The other way that we see is where people will physically walk along a power line and try to visually get eyeballs on where a tree could fall into a line. Can you tell which tree here could fall into that line? No, no idea. We'll use a laser range finder, right. right? Something like this would first take a look at the power line and then you'd look over that tree. And so now we know the distance to the power line to us and from us to that tree. What we don't have, though, is the distance of that tree to the power line. You know how we do that? No. Use your head. It's all mental calculus and trigonometry. And imagine doing this for each of the trees around here, right? That's a huge task. It's an enormously challenging problem. A satellite imagery is another common thing. Can you see the power line in here? No. I mean, it's a needle in a haystack. So this is a very useful tool, but it's not enough to solve the problem. We have to find a better solution to this sort of challenge. Back in 2017, another fallen tree started the wine country fires here in California. Enview is an innovation that promises to eliminate that from ever happening again. So KP, how have you guys innovated a solution? Yeah, Paul, we started with the realization that the world is in 3D and the future of maps belongs to 3D. So we took a 20-year-old technology called LiDAR and let me actually show you what it is. Mm. Let's use this laser pointer as an example. Popular so, with kittens. Yes. <laughs> How has that technology innovated the future? So, of... LiDAR works in a similar way. It shoots light and it measures the time that the signal 
goes back to the sensor and assigns a coordinate in space. The whole point is to actually build a 3D version of the world in points. This is LiDAR data and this white blob of data is 35 million points. It will take an army of people months to actually come in and manually label this data. So what AMV has done, we have automatically found a way to label this data. We use artificial intelligence to identify those objects. You need this data labeled to understand how those features interact with each other. I get it. So you guys are effectively your 3D map makers. Yes, intelligent With layers of information that we hadn't seen before. Correct. Then we can run the analytics to find out which trees are in danger. And now you can view the data in 3D. And those red areas are the parts of the tree that if the trees fell towards the lines, would strike the line. Incredible. Solving big problems needs the right minds to have access to the right data. But even then, the most valuable of insights can be lost unless they're visualized in a compelling manner. Enview is doing that, combining artificial intelligence with cloud computing and intuitive visualization. Hi, Dalton. Uh, Denise, great to see you. Me too. So I hear you work at Uber. I do. I've been at Uber for about two and a half years now uh, as a product designer, and it's been great. Well, what are you guys working on these days? Not everyone knows how to use Uber, believe it or not. Uh -huh. There's many of us in this world, so we want to make a greater access point for getting an Uber. An access point like where I would call my Uber from, you mean? I think this morning. Um, like, how, how'd you get our coffees? I swiped a card. Exactly. Wow, oh, look at this. It's yeah. physical, it's real. Yeah, welcome to the kiosk cove. This specifically right now is our rider kiosk. Whoa, rider. So you mean instead of an app on my phone, I'm gonna walk up to this kiosk? Exactly. So what we plan on doing with this is putting this inside hospitals, assisted living centers, maybe concert venues, to make access to getting a ride much easier for certain demographics. Just last week, we had a group of older adults uh, right here testing this out. And so it was great to get some insights from them on how we can provide mobility solutions. Basically, you would kind of walk up to this kiosk, and the first thing you do is you go in and you enter in where you go. So far, I'm familiar, yep. okay. Next, all I have to do is type in my phone number, and this is so they get text messages for when the driver's gonna arrive. And then lastly, just like you did with your coffee this morning, ah, just take card's... your credit card and give it a good old swipe. It's so easy. And very soon, we'll be on our way. Another kiosk. Klosh, tell me what this one does. So this is our virtual driver support kiosk. Um, this provides drivers with uh, virtual assistance. Drivers actually, we've heard from them that they actually prefer face-to-face -face communication. Not all of them have access to physical driver support centers. And a lot of times they require uploading certain pieces of information. And okay. let's say I need to upload my insurance documentation or my vehicle registration, I can do that as well. All right, so another kiosk, smaller. I see get a ride, get support, which we already looked at. What's happening here? Yeah, so this is a one-stop shop, and this is the new design that we're moving towards with a single large touchscreen. Wow, so I use Eats, so are you saying I could walk up and just order my food here? Exactly, so here you go. Now here are all the local options for you to order food. Um, there's a bunch of other utilities that this kiosk provides. Uh, for example, for like transit time, so Uber's really focusing on public wow. transit right now. Yeah. So this is a great example of you can see how far your train is away. You know, I really like this because I don't have to pull my phone out. It's large, I can see it in person, okay. Exactly. Another great example uh, is we're working with What, Uber. was that a helicopter? It is, it is. Uh, okay. So we're working with Uber Elevate to make a, a check-in uh, for Uber helicopters that right now are happening in New York. We can't wait, honestly, to just see this on a street corner and have users use them. Uber is innovating in reverse. So while we're really used to physical-based companies bringing their products and services into the digital space, Uber is bringing their really popular digital service into our physical world. But between you and me, what I'm really excited about is the helicopter rides.